This board is one of the last boards made by Mitz for the Altair product line. This is the 88 UIO. UIO stands for Universal IO. Um, provided two main functions. One was a serial port for an operator console. And the second was it provided uh, cassette interface functions for loading and saving programs. The um, serial port was through this 6850 UART here. This is the exact same UART that's used on Altair's very popular 2SIO board. And it can be put at the exact same address as the first port on that 2SIO, which was by far the most common um, serial port used in Altair software. So this board could eliminate the 2SIO board in terms of having an operator console. The cassette interface function was done through this UART right here, and it also looked identical to the original board. So the Altair cassette interface and the cassette interface function on this board completely interchangeable. Uh, read and write the same cassettes, same software, could use it, etc. Also added a feature or two. Number one, uh, this relay was added to allow motor control over the cassette so you could start it and stop it under program control. And the, the modulator, demodulator circuits were simpler, a lot fewer adjustments. So this board was simpler and more reliable. The original cassette interface consisted of two boards. One board was a serial board that had uh, the edge connector and plugged into the bus. And attached to it with spacers was another board almost the same size that was the modem for the RF modulator, excuse me, the uh, audio modulator demodulator on that. And uh, several wires had to run between those two boards. It was kind of kludgy looking. Um, took up the space of two boards. And then you also had the two SIO boards. So this eliminates almost three board slots if you get right down to it. So it's a simpler solution and in the end would have been less expensive. Um, over on the serial port side, it's a couple of nice features versus the original 2SIO as well. Baud rate, you just choose with a simple dip switch, whereas on the original board, the 2SIO, you had to run jumpers and solder them. Likewise, to switch between current loop or RS-232, this header can be pulled out and moved one position to the left, and now the board is interfacing with current loop. Put it back, it's interfacing with RS-232. Doing that on the original 2SIO board took at least... 10 jumpers, fairly, you know, not just little short jumpers, but wiring changes that had to be made. Um, also, another simplification is this interface. Uh, it uses a standard 26 pin dual row header for connecting to the DB25 in the back with a ribbon cable. That saves the hand wiring job from, um, it was a Molex connector similar to this one used for the cassette interface that went to the back. So this board simplifies things in that you take the space of three boards, two complete functions down to one board. And it's a little more flexible in terms of um, how easy it is to change settings if you needed to adapt it. All right, so next thing we're gonna do is go ahead and put it inside this system and give it a demo. All right, now we're gonna use that UIO board to go ahead and load Altair 8K Basic with, from cassette. And then of course we can use the console port to uh, demonstrate how to use Basic. We'll turn around and load a simple program and run it. The, pro, uh, the computer we're running it in today, this is an Altair 8800C, which you might have seen in one of my other videos. This is actually an Altair clone cabinet uh, that we're inside. We see we have modern switching power supplies in here instead of the original linear regulator. CPU board is a duplicate of the Altair 8800 original board. So it's the exact same board layout and components as the original 8800 CPU, but this is a board you can physically buy today. I'm uh, gonna skip this board for a second right now. Right here is an Altair original 16K static RAM board. So this will give us plenty of room for loading 8K basic and having room for programs. And then the only other board is the UIO board that we're gonna to demonstrate today for our console and cassette interface. The board I skipped is the interface board that connects all the signals from the bus through this ribbon cable to the front panel board. So the front panel functionality is provided by the big front panel board in this interface. This is a modern board that eliminates um, all the individual wires that ran from the original Altair front panel board down to the motherboard. So it's just a little bit cleaner interface and it also fits inside this Altair clone cabinet nicely. Um, a little simpler to do, but it pretty much duplicates what the original uh, front panel did. Now it does provide us an extra feature or two, and we're gonna demonstrate one of those today um, that can come in kind of handy when you're doing this kind of demonstration. All right, let me set this down and get this going. All right, turn on the computer and give it a hard reset. So at this point, we have a computer that has nothing in RAM and there is nothing um, in ROM either to allow us to load from cassette. So we're gonna have to key in 
the bootstrap loader for 4K, uh, excuse me, 8K basic using a cassette interface. So we'd normally go to the manual and start toggling all that in. Now, one feature this front panel board set has is a quick way to preload some of these common bootstrap loaders. So here's a nice little cheat. You select the item you want to load on these lower eight switches. A code of 23 specifies that I want the bootstrap loader for 8K basic version four for cassette. All I do is set that selection code and hit aux left and it has now put that in at address zero. If you take a look, these are the bytes that you would have toggled in from the bootstrap loader. It just preloaded them in RAM for you. So the cassette loader, uh, bootstrap loader, is in memory now. So that was a nice little shortcut. Uh, the other thing that you typically did to make cassette interface reliable, it's something they decided after they printed uh, the original manuals and added as an addendum, is a leader detector. And it was usually put up here at uh, hex 100. So the code for that, so we don't have to type it in, is 31. Put that in, it's automatically been entered up at 100, and you can see it already did an examine at 100 for me as well. So up here at hex 100, I have got the cassette interface leader detector, and down at zero is the actual bootstrap loader. So this has just preloaded the code we would have typed in. All right, so there's kind of a shortcut we've got there. All right, so we can go ahead and get this going. Now the uh, basic needs to know what terminal you're using. So we'll put that up here on the upper four switches. 0000, zero, zero, zero or one means two SIO with a single stop bit. And again, that UIO board looks just like a two SIO as far as basic is concerned. So that's what we select. On the lower four, you tell, you tell the uh, um, loader what type of device is being used. A code of three tells it you're using a cassette interface. All right, this is ready to go, so I can hit run. And because we have the leader detector, you can see this bit is on, meaning we're running the code up here at 100 hex. Once the leader detector detects the leader byte, you will see that disappear and it's down here loading at one. I'm gonna hit play over here on the cassette. All right, so we'll watch it here for just a minute and pretty soon you will see that light turn off, which means it's actually into the checksum loader. There it is. Now it's actually loading the checksum loader. This is, takes about 10 seconds to get the checks of the bootstrap loader loaded. Uh, and then you'll see it, there he is. Now it's switched over to the actual checksum loader. And this is where it is now loading basic with checksum verification. This process takes about another four minutes or so. So I'll go ahead and do a video cut. Um, first, let's take a quick look at this uh, UIO board. So as you can see here, we've got a ribbon cable that runs from that connector to the DB25 in the back. So that just makes the life a lot simpler than having to run that cable um, with hand-wired um, connections to a soldered DB25 in the back. Cassette interface, this duplicates the cassette interface on the original Altair cassette interface board. And these cables run down, I don't know if you can see them down there, to a couple of audio jacks down in the very, very back. And if you can see, there's our cable coming in right there for picking up data from the cassette. All right, we'll go ahead and do a video cut and we'll come back when this is about done. All right, this should be nearing completion soon. We'll be able to see it when uh, something comes up. Oh, there it is up on the screen and the light pattern on the computer changes. All right, it's asking for memory size. Stop the cassette. I'm gonna go ahead and zoom in so we can see this now. All right, memory size. Hit return, let it size it. Terminal width, let it take it. All right, so we've got about uh, about 10,000 bytes free um, in our 16K card and nothing in memory right now. All right, what I'm gonna do is go ahead and load a Primes program. Let me get this up to the right spot. It's up at 185 on my counter and I'm at 170, 180. That's about 185 or so now. All right, so to load a program from cassette, you type C load, and then in quotes, you put the name of the program. Now in reality, it only saved the first letter, so the P is all that really mattered. So uh, this will load it. It does have to match though. All right, this is not as finicky as going out and loading basic, so you don't need the uh, leader detector or anything like that because it has to look for a particular pattern uh, that is in everything it 
basic writes out when it saves the file. So this, this is safer and tends to work pretty reliably. All right, that's a short program. You can see it's done already. Do a list. And you can see that's all it is to it. And it runs uh, and displays primes. All right, so there we go. We've got a console up and running and a cassette interface all on a single fairly clean board that uh, is a nice reliable way to do it. It makes for a nice minimal Altair system using um, original hardware. Of course, this doesn't have to run in this new system. You could certainly run it in an original one as well. All right, that, uh, that concludes it for this video. That was about the end of the MITS era. This board was produced in 1977, which is when Pertec bought out MITS. And uh, Pertec pretty much decided the hobby world was not what they wanted to do. They shut down the Altair product line very shortly after they purchased it and focused on business systems. So it was kind of the end of the era. And this board was right there at the end. Very few of any of these were actually sold. The ones that are out there in circulation, for all we know, may just be ones that were, you know, under production or under test and that people just happen to have because of closing out of the MITS product line, that kind of thing. Don't know for sure. Anybody who has details as to whether this was ever marketed, um, I'd love to hear more about it. It was advertised as part of the Attaché product line, so it could be that it was marketed, but uh, the Attaché product line didn't really sell that many as well either. Anyway, I'll keep rambling forever if I don't stop, so uh, that'll do it for this video.